Hi guys, welcome to this next video about the SQL flow and Power Apps tutorials. And what we are going to do today is to uh, communicate with our server and add records, update records, and all kinds of things. So let's go green and let me show you what we are. Now we are gonna have Power Apps, we're gonna have Flow, we're gonna have an SQL server. What we're basically gonna do is make a formula or a trigger which calls a flow with parameters the flow calls SQL server with parameters then we have all procedures insert update and select and then get the result table back and JSON to power apps so when we are starting a registration we gotta do an insert then when we have a registration active and we want to change it and to close it or to do some logic on it we have to update it and then we active records back when we have them so normally this would work like this so we're gonna trigger a flow with parameters and gonna insert something gonna update and then we're gonna clear collect and gonna run the same flow in our latest video but then we're gonna have two flows every time we do something with a collection and i don't want that because when i have a lot of people flow Flows will take and cost money. So I want to limit the flows on my server. So we ain't gonna do that. What we are gonna do, we're gonna have one call procedure which can do the insert, the update, by the way, if the information is back. Correct. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now we have one problem and uh, to change that problem we have to revisit the last video so let's get our database so here we have our last video we have the active records and we execute it we get our information back okay no problem i have one record only where the problem lies when we go to power apps and gonna do in the next video do updates and give it data uh, date time information to power apps we will run in a problem with um, the server C time and our power app region time. now we can uh, place the region time power app only then it's gonna break on when we don't have time so basically we have the region time we put in our data source and then when we don't have an end time we have to get date time and that's UTC so that's different and then we're gonna fix that have to fix that so basically wh where we're gonna fix it is in our registration view um, and for this few counts that we not really can do uh, spark The date if with the time text and the end time text because this will be fine when we do that but the duration in minutes uh, will be lost and the duration text so we have to put in a UTC time here and then the end time text and the start time text will crash on us so let's copy this to a new window and say uh, let's organize it a little bit on the part we want to change so what we have to do is we have to have this line and line we have to build it a little bit different because when we going to write something to our data source we're gonna have use the UTC time to have a reliable duration minutes and time text duration text giving back to us so this S time has to be converted from the UTC time time now so 
gonna fix that. And uh, let's fix it first here and then take it out. So let's add a date at for hours. And I'm gonna use two for now because my time is two times from UTC time. Your time is made different. So later on, this two is gonna be a variable to put in from Power Apps to say, okay, I want this converted to the time I'm in and give it back as time. And we do this all to be uh, have a text and have a reliable, a visible representation of our Power App. So now we have the date at and see if this works. Okay, we do it. Sorry for that. I'll take this out here. That's it about the daytime text. Here. Sometimes it's hard to do. At the end, it will. So the time text, we want to check this. See if this works. Put in two here and Put in two there. Get rid of here. So now let's see what happens. Next time, here we have six forty-eight and sixteen thirteen. It came from fourteen thirteen. This up, this now different to be oh, 14 to 16, also two hours different. So, this works now. We can put it in here and we kind of get it out of then we kind of go to procedure. We have to modify this and then. Let's put it in here because we're gonna calculate this in our store procedure, and I'm gonna put it on the same place as this one. Uh, yeah, just so it's uh, well organized, and we ain't gonna do this this parameter, but on the parameter from our fuel engine. And let's select this and try this out. And this works on this moment. Now we have a n text and a two hour difference text here. So now this is the region time. And when we change that to UTC, it's gonna display the region time for us based on region in Power Apps. So for now, we're gonna erase this too because we made it new and we're gonna copy this. We're gonna crap our new, um, let me say it script without what we can't use there, and go here and paste it here. See if everything works, and now we have the s time text, the s time, uh, n time text. We save this, close it. Do it here, okay. This works. Let's see if registration active still works. And you see what I did here. My test just a minute ago. I put in an extra variable. So I have the U2C hours at int basic zero. So that means it's the same time as the UTC time. I'm gonna copy this variable and Put it where the two is. So okay, I time the time regular columns. I'm gonna convert these two columns to our new.
Okay. So to do. Basis parameter. So let's run it now. It's complete. And let's now execute. So we have the user one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we only want the active and the hours at let's say two. See what happens. So now we have the time of four, 14. 14, that's the UTC time. And we have the time tick 16, 13. Which basically is two hours uh, above the UTC time. So when you are down the UTC time, four hours earlier. Oh. But now we have add an extra parameter. So let's go to Power Apps. And uh, okay, I showed here some labels because I was testing of course. And here we see just now the reach in time. We have to convert it later to uh, UTC time by do the date at now time set offset minutes. So this is the offset time uh, from UTC and then uh, make it a number. And later on, we're gonna use this text as the output text as a parameter to our for procedure where we're doing the insert and the up. So I'm giving something away for later. And here you have the date diff, you have the same offset function, and we have now and the difference in hour. And that's the two. That's why I know I'm two hours off of the UTC time. So, um, but what I said, we have to change this one. So let's go to off, say action so have a edit that one go to future and you see we have here the new UTC and I think I really think Oh no, we can do that, we, but we can save it. And now it's safe for flow. It's not okay yet to use it here because it only will see two parameters. But what we can do is go to the view, data source, say here, move this up. You see the red squirrels here. And because this is not uh, available for Power Apps now. Not edit yet. So let's go to the third button. Or we can put something here already and say reconnect it. Okay, now it's in again. We can delete this one. Still, there is a red bar, but that's because he wants to have a parameter. That's here. Say we want to have a parameter at a parameter, we just adjust. And what we are going to do is to build parameters in Power Apps later on. And we're going to do the first one here. I probably did make it here. So let's set the P as parameter. UTC hours at so this is the parameter where I said hey the UTC the hours I have to add based on my region which is two and when I now run this and go to here and say I want to the UTC I want to add this global variable as a parameter so procedure and then now let's run this and see if it works oh it's okay 
be appended probably because we have an old schema. One and one and again. What happens? Checkout or payable. Those. Basically, I think we have something. So let's just this thing active. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go to two and say run flow. Successful. Let's see what happens. We have a stored procedure and schema. We have output basically the same it used to be because we have the S time and the end time. So this should work. And the user ID is okay. I think we didn't run this at start. So now we have a user ID. And now we can run this. I could text the text, of course, need a value here. So let's make this a value. And let's run this. Let's run. Run it, go back and variables UTC, 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 no value. Oh, we have it hasn't had value. Let's pick this. Formula or complete form. Grab this. Go to parameter. Gather. Of error. So you see, er a trial and error is always the way to go. Power. So now you see it's a number. It's thing which is also as a number. And now let's try part that fix way with our record. Okay, we fixed it. Let's just again and check it. Always check, check, check. We're done. We now reconnected our flow, connected again. Changed our parameter. This is the first one, so we gonna uh, use it later on. We are done, and it took us about twenty minutes to fix this part. So now let's build store procedure. Let's call this SPP. Registration change change yes we're gonna add parameters here later on and we don't need this part we don't need this text this text get our name get our date and I always use ISO formatting so uh, all countries knows this is the 27th of October and um, post changes to SQL from Power App and return the 
collection records to power rack. Okay, let's first erase this one and let's do a layout. So here we're gonna have parameters and the one we kind of have as a starter is a ID because we want to have inserts and updates. So when we update, we have to have an ID. So it's very simple. Here we're gonna manipulate the ma. Gonna do something with our variables. Changes. Then we're gonna do an if. Uh, at id is zero begin and end and between this we gonna let's do print and save it in just one moment we're gonna do an insert else when the id has a number we're gonna begin and end and in between we're gonna do a change or an update, sorry. Updates and update to our database, and we're gonna return records to Power Apps. So that's basically the schema. So here we're gonna variable change, then we're gonna check for the if it's zero, like default do an insert if it we have a id put in we're gonna do an update and update records let's save this okay we scare off our d it's work and let's finger it is refresh the store position just they will be zero print insert and one we run this We're gonna have so basically this logic let's modify and now we're gonna do some magic because now we're gonna have the insert and the update Easiest way is just to go to the registration table and print a search statement to a query window. I'm gonna copy this whole part. We need and instead of print, we insert. Now let's clean it up a little bit so it's easy to change for us. And do the same here, the values. Take this one, put this beneath. And okay, this is nice. Now let's take this part because this are gonna be our uh, how do you say that? Uh, fields. And I'm gonna put them in right here. So I'm gonna make variables of this, comma, add, type this int. And this is gonna be a zero. And why a default zero? Because the registration type ID should be larger than zero to be a value which is a relationship database. So I'm gonna use this zero in this part where I manipulate our variable. Easy as that. Now let's do it for the rest. So destination type gonna be an ID and also it's gonna be zero of free text ID okay we can use it like this or we can rename it to user ID but let's just keep it like this or let's make it user ID because that's the way I call it at uh, power apps also for the customer ID basically an int and we don't always give in a customer because we are when we're traveling or some 
work at home, we don't have a customer. So it can be uh, zero. And this is a test date. Think about this. Times we gonna put in because we're gonna do something else here. We are gonna put in notes, and this is default empty, and we want to have active, and it's a, it's not a bit. We're gonna put in. We're gonna put in int, and I will explain in just a minute why this is. Now, uh, let's go. Prep our variables and put it in the values again. Destination type, so the user ID. We have a customer, and now we need those, only we're gonna put them here. Sorry for the noise, that's my neighbor is making a lot of noise today. And I hope you can still hear me because I like to go on with this. So we're gonna declare our variables here and, uh, and I hope he will stop in just one moment. It's gonna be a date. Let's do the same where S type is then time and declare e time and time. Now let's uh, close this. And of course, we have to put at symbols, say these are variables. So now we have declared these three, and they're gonna be null by default by declaring them. So let's take the s time date, put it here. Take the s time start time, put it here. The end time we don't need with an insert because active. We Put in notes and the active we don't need because default is going to be zero. So basically, our insert is gone now. Format it a bit. This is like I can read it properly. Let's do the same here. See if we copy it. What thing? And that's we have to activate. Now we should be able to copy it. So the insert is ready. Now let's go to the update. Do the same. So script the table as a update. Copy this part. Copy this. and there we we'll have it. Now we are going to do is to say uh, here the ID is at ID. So basically this means we don't have to uh, put in a where clause based on a user on uh, specific combinations of conditions we just can say the id is same as the id because it's unique we know we always have just one record easy as that so now the active is the at active here Let's do so. This is again 
probably see what else. Here. Time. Here. Daytime. Custom. Uh, it's around here. here, nation type here, and okay. So, uh, this ID normally I do always only you see now dating that I didn't hear. So, I'm forgetting every time I'm forgetting this. So now we have to think uh, when we do an insert like this, this is fine because we want to add this. variables, but sometimes we want to have a null put in here because we don't have destination customer. As I said, that it's what we're here now at the update. We have a record. We're gonna update uh, this record, and uh, but not always. So the registration type, when we have a record, probably we're gonna update this. So we have to find a way to say you don't get updated. And we can use the is no function for that, and put in a comma, and then put the field value itself at the back. So basically, what this does. Is that it's gonna take a variable but when we have set it to no so when it's no it's gonna stay exactly the same as it was before so when this was a no it's gonna be a no when this has a value it's gonna have the same value so we're gonna do this for all our uh, places so let's do the destination type Comma destination type. It's as easy as this to make our solution very flexible for all the kind of changes we want to do. Only when we put in variables, we have to think about how we can make some logic that we don't erase things we earlier uh, did. Now, now, when you look at this, uh, when I have notes, for example, when I have notes, and then after that, I'm going to say, I don't want to have notes, I want to have a blank. Uh, we have to be able to not, not set the note to null based on the condition. So, how we can do that is to not only have the note say let's let's sh show you how you can manipulate those variables so you get what I want what I mean so if at notes let's start with a note is equal to default then I want to set the notes to no and as I said for the notes this is not a good way of doing this so we're going to change this in just one moment let me tell you what happened so we have a variable it can't be set to null from power apps and from flow so we have to put something in and we're going to put in an empty value so we're going to put in an empty string instead of a zero so now we have a node the empty string comes in we are going to go here here is an if statement and this says when the empty when the notes is an empty string, I'm gonna set you to nil. And then when we post a or insert a new record, we're gonna insert a nil here. And when we do an update, it's gonna say is nil, so the notes is nil. So we're gonna pick the notes again. And there is one problem with this uh, solution that when the notes are filled, so they have a value, and then we pass in a blank on deliberately to power apps to say we want to erase the notes up we want to just make it blank general 
then we have a problem because then it takes the old nodes. So now we're gonna have a choice, or we're gonna make the choice to never make the node null, but make the node a empty string for all the time in our application. So what we are going to do is a extra variable and we're going to say notes chains and we're going to put in a, we're going to put in a bit and we will set it to zero. So we're going to have a bit, the node chains, shoot it chains, then put in a zero and when it's when it's not have to change, then don't want the notes. So we're gonna copy this. We're gonna put here. Okay, maybe by surround this F. So when this is occurring, is zero and if note is B we're gonna set let's see if we can change it because I'm just thinking of probably we can say begin and end then it's complete so basically what we are when the node change is zero, then we're gonna check if the node is empty. And when the node is empty, we're gonna set it to no. And else we end the base put in here. But because this default is zero, and this default is zero, when there are no changes to our parameter, it's gonna be no. And here it's gonna take the note. So I think that's the most difficult one. So it's nice that we already done this. Let's take this variable and do the same. So if this variable is that's a little is zero, the default. Then we're gonna set our registration registration type ID is no. And what we have to do is change uh, to the point comma uh, because then our SQL can really see okay, this is one line, you're stopping here, and we go to the next line. It's good to be explicit, it's not really necessary because uh, SQL can determine this this situation on itself but it's good to do so so basically do it here the destination type we can copy that go here and same user id you always have a value but let's do it nevertheless if we take something in with a value we don't want to change the user id i think because then we don't know who made the selection at the end? So let's just add them all. Same for the customer. And you see again, just as in the earlier videos, basically we have an ID, we carry it out, and we repeating itself ourselves to get our logic. So the node change we did, we did node and active. Uh, should Active. Yes, we will do something active because we want to have the explicit. And here we could say uh, the active is not in zero or not in one, but a different number. Then we want to set it to null because when it's zero, we want to set it to active to false, and else we want to set it to active to one. So. Uh, but I'm ain't gonna do a is not value end, so not the end function. I just say not in. 
and this is a nice feature i think of sql because now it's not very a problem to do two ends function it's basically all right but let's say when you have a variable and you uh, have to see if it's five different text strings ten different text strings uh, uh say i i have to have five uh, customers and i only want the records for those customers you can basically just say uh, the customer id should be in uh, brackets and then one comma five comma seven comma eight and it's for sql it's going to be the same as or because it's going to convert it to r and then execute it and it's going to be just as fast only it's easier to read for you as a person always nice to keep it lean and small so when it's not inactive or active zero or one true or false then i want to set it set or active is no so now we have done a lot let's save this Control r to get time back and now we're almost done but now we have the problem uh, with dates and earlier i already showed you the uh, registration active how we did it there and basically we're gonna do a same here um, but we have to read the utc time to our data source so what we have to do and uh, let's a pretty tick is also we have to add variable and let's say this is the utc start time um, text so what we basically gonna do we're gonna put a text in here from our power app and let's say this is standard zero it's a far char and let's make it a far char 30 i think 30 is yeah enough same and you see i don't uh, add a estate text utc estate text to it that's basically the s time text is also a date so why should i so we have this and we gonna do if formulas here i'm gonna grab this one and when it's zero we can set this to this is nil and then when it's zero else we're gonna crap our do it on a line and begin we have two ends because we're gonna time we're gonna do a set as date here we gonna convert our target type is a far char and I now we're gonna do a cost. Cost is easier. So we're gonna cost our UTC S time as a date. And also we're gonna do our that variable S time. And we're gonna cost same. So let's copy this to a date. Fine. 
and we're done. So when it's empty, we can set it to nil, and else we're gonna set the S date to UTC, S time text as a date, and this is UTC times. So in our database, there are not being or time, region time, T time. Later, in our core procedure, we cannot convert those to time we have. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now we gonna do the same basic for in time, and when it's standard, so no. We gonna set it to nil, and else we gonna have the end time. Here we don't have to. What I'm doing? I'm gonna use the begin because we have one line. One line is fine if you have more. You have to put it. So and we gonna close our formulas. So and. Don't forget to change this one. So when we have a F time text set, we're gonna pass this to our add variables. And when we have a UTC E time text zero, we're gonna set it to nil. And else we're gonna set this to a daytime UTC daytime pass it from text. Okay. I think this is all with this script and a few manipulations. Mission variable Let's be nice and clean for our text. Uh, let's say here post to tables. Post records to tables. I like to use cat and post because cat is. I, I like them to use them. So now we gonna post our records and we now have to return the records to Power App. Of course, I can do everything I did, but there is an easier way by just doing exec SPPA. Get the active, we have to put in uh, the active int. So this is who is going to be one in this case. We have the user ID here. And no, we don't need the commas, I think. Or do we need the commas? Yes, we need the commas. And it's one, uh, one I have another one. Uh, a UTC hours. It ain't, haven't bring this in, so we have to put it here. UTC. How we? Same. So we have to put it in here, so we can put it here. And now we are done. And now we have one store procedure. All the changes we ever want to do. For. Easy enough. So let's um, try to execute. Let's go to station. Active records. So let's go here. And Update query window. Time to get dates. Get dates. Zero for records. This. This. We don't need because we 
in the rear the D is is full registration okay here I will check this just fix fix we don't have record check so when we store the teacher they active one two three four five six seven hours at zero if not so let's keep this for now We only have that. Now let's execute feature. We have the ID. This well, first we want to make a record. Let's do that's the travel destination zero one two three four five six seven customer ID. It's not putting customer now. Uh, let's not change the notes. Let's do the test on them. It appears in query window. Uh, active one. UTC time. Power apps grab that. Let's do F5. C time, so grab this one. Go back. Oh. Run it like that. Now let's script. Go to go to here. See if we play the record. So we have an record save and seven the two. No for the destination type. Of three sixty five user ID is there. Customer is no. We have a start date of today. We have the UTC time of now. We have no end time. No, we have no. That's a little bit strange because we should have notes. So let's check this out. Why did this? Because it shouldn't be there. It's we have a travel a no name. It's time. It's time text. Change. Oh no, we have 14. We have a duration in minutes. Five. A little bit strange. So, uh, we have to check some things. But maybe we're going to do that in a different video. If we really take this through things we do. Okay, um, let's go here. So now let's change some things. End time here. 10 minutes. And, and this is basically to comment this out. Still do the text. One. That's all our zero. That's the problem. Of course, in this case, hours two hours later, because that's the time. I mean, so this will see that. Let's have ID seven. That's one. So let's active here. Uh, first, look at the time. Now the time is two hours and two hours later. So adding the two is fixing this part. <coughs> now I leave active on one, so let's put it to zero. On this again, and now our search done. Now we have to look at the note changed because that didn't work right. 
So we have the node chains zero. Here we have when zero, then and do a case where so case when zero, then if it's this is and when it's filled we formula is to well base What I'm doing. So it's no case when that node is zero, then we should this set the node say in and maybe case. case when there is a condition You should know I only doing SQL for eight months, so <laughs> I'm I'm not very experienced. So sometimes this happens, but normally I manage to get it work. So if no, so when it's zero, then it should check. If nodes are empty, then of course nodes weren't empty. That's the problem. I didn't do anything wrong. So when I do this and zero to the going to customer start time here don't have a time and the hour let's let's see if this works so we have a new registration the type is two and two is travel I travel we travel to this customer we like 65 ID we have a customer ID an estate and nice time and the notes only the notes are not null and they should be. They should be no. But let's see if it changed. Okay. Let's do this. Say x zero. Please. Update this. Um, let's make one more now no change it's zero we have the same customer same registration gonna be travel start time let's run this f9 registration no. let's like this Uh, 
part comment anymore so we have one hour ten minutes start time at zero active go away empty so we can see do we want to see okay we had nine so basically we want to see to nine to zero you here already active there let's close the there is not our notes are still zero we have an in one hour and ten minutes later and we have the ESO time 70 minute duration and that's 10 minutes here the end time is zero is 64 and okay great I think everything works so now let's go to power we are in Power Apps, and um, we basically are coming post and a registration save. Post registration basis. Copy this part. So you see here I do all the cats and then at the top all my posts. So when I'm trying things out, not um, how do you say that to break everything? It's I it's you. So let's add in an action. So new flow. Here we can add the SQL step, pick our feature. Store procedure changes. Then we got a list parameter. Basically, all you're gonna do is just ask Power App. Okay, I see some videos where somebody put variables here. Stop. So, first make variables. Is in. I don't take the time, I don't care, I say as long as it's descriptive enough for me and I know which parameter I have to add where in my flow in Power Apps, it's okay by me. I ain't looking for extra time to edit. Do something, basically doesn't matter. Opinion. So, but everything should do it. Already wants itself, but I give it a name R. Yeah, registration save. Save the flow checker. I know zero errors. Error just as in power apps. So they adding functionality every time back to this. So let's now uh, test this. Let's first just do go to. Let's go to if that is flow, go to forms, show the options options, and let's pick this part, copy this, and let's store it here. Just to be sure when we lose it, when we go back. So, and there is the noise again, uh, I will, speak up a little bit so you can keep hearing me so we have the store procedure with all our I don't know why it ain't giving us this but 
okay it's gonna be fine but we gonna have a request because we're gonna put in the same request as we had before and we can put in the JSON here and we, we normally I store this string somewhere centralized but I we, we check this uh, we are calling the same store procedure which we did from the other flow so basically this should work here we see the results set table let's put it in let's save this part and uh, basically this should work and maybe just for fun let's go to power apps and first just put in our parameters and see if we have a hiccup if we have we come back and we test it here i think it will work easily so now we have our changes put it in here and here we see a list of so active now we're gonna here we're gonna take this line because we're gonna store our returned records in the same collection as we did yet gonna do this and then here we have to in between put in parameter let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see what i'm doing and what i'm gonna this down and I gonna put this for it so when I start typing everything comes together so I'm gonna set something what I'm going to do I'm gonna set some parameters so I'm gonna say P registration ID and here I will take it with the registration ID because maybe later on I want to add some records to my accounts or to my uh, employees or whatever and then the id is not very descriptive that's the main reason so and i'm gonna set this id to zero to our default and then i'm gonna take this one here easy as that we have the second one customer id and i'm gonna do the same i'm gonna come here and I'm gonna call it P for parameter customer ID and yeah it has a default of zero also. Let's grab it in. Let's take the next one. That's so we type ID. Let's take this to type i d and we set it to zero also because this is a relation table and of course we have to put in a p it so we know it's, it's a whole parameter which we're gonna use go to the next and put in destination yeah for So we have to set a, another parameter P active. And basically this is gonna be one for starters. Because as long as we don't close a record, we basically want it to be active. So that's why we this one. So this is active customer need to write at the end. at that break so operation and let's go to the next it notes so let's put comma shift enter set a p notes notes okay notes yes and the notes are an empty string is a doma a double I don't know how they you call these but fine 
uh, reading signs. Let's call it like this. So now we have to have the sets and let's copy this one. Changed. Changes. And we're gonna do zero because it's it's a byte. Now let's take this away. So copy it. Oops. So let's bring it down so it's it's a little bit clearer for us. We are. This and take them each other. And let's not do that while as else we have space to see both our parameters. Look, now let's do the next. This should be the registration type. I and let's repeat ourselves registration type id we're gonna set to it of zero close thing let's go to the next the user id okay the user id is set already because we put it in the start This parameter is going to change during our time Apple. So it shouldn't be in this list. Let's go to the time text. Okay, let's set the parameter UTC start time. Time text and this the default zero. Close it. Maybe to do that. Copy this. No. And of course, we do B for it. Do double quotes. Quotes. Let's go to the next P U T C at and zero. Uh, no, it's not zero, but we're gonna set it in one moment. First, finish this. And now we have the last one. Let's copy this part and say this is the start time text. Let's put it. And now all the red stars are gone because we save or blow all the parameters we want to have. Okay. That's nice. Uh, let's fix this one because it's going to be the same for all our app and it's going to be the same for us. So let's go to part, take this for and two things. Set it start, we can reset it each time. Parameter. I think this is start thing here. Here, let's copy this out because these are not parameter change every time. One R. Now let's basically. Same. Let's do this and hold it. Second. 
copy this. Let's do it on this. Call this global parameters. Copy this. And set for it. Descriptive enough. Set here, and this is on event three. So the default is three here. And let's put this and set e three e three because it's not reliant on other player collect or variable. Edit here. It's fine. Run the on start procedure so all the variable sets. Right. Okay, so the registration active list is reliant with that. So this parameter f here we take out go to the parameter it should be set for the concurrent phase. So let's put it with a comma out then run it on J. So you see, we have an ID and you have to change small bits to let it work. So now when we go to Q and we variables to global and we say ETC, we do P for it, we have the output at S2. So it's set for the time we use our application. And now let's uh, try to See everything works. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna copy this part and we're gonna paste this and here. This we're gonna say parameters. Parameters. Uh, okay, and let's say this set a set, and this is a set. Now let's go here, and at the end, at one extra line where we say set event then event ten. What this basically does when we have our player collect. Then reset all our parameters. So let's try this out. So we're gonna set the parameter, new registration, zero, we're gonna add in a customer, registration, put change, a try if it works. And the UTC start time. This let's go to green. Go to the and it's gonna be time. Go there again. Uh, start time is the current time. Okay. Fingers crossed to see if it works. And you see this changed. So we post the registration change and then we reset our parameters. Basically, when we go to our variables, globals, say we want to have all parameters, you will see that our still at two type is 
zero the node says no value but we set it so it's returned to no value again time is zero the destination is zero change is zero again customer id is zero again so everything is based as a base as a, a default value where we will return time to okay now let's go to our SQL server and on this one see if there is record we have a practical record with a try work home let's go to power apps check our collection and indeed we have a record oh this works now let's revisit Oh yeah, now say active inactive it uh, let's see it's record number ten registration number ten text shouldn't change so zero registration type shouldn't change the end time will change one so, so we keep everything default. For this default, we only say, hey, we have a registration ID. Uh, we set the end time and okay, end it. Set it to inact. Let's see if this works. Okay, trigger is sent again. Flow is run. We have our registration and you see how fast the parameter is set and it's waiting for flow to return our records. Go to collection and it's empty, so this works. Data source, we run this and now we have an end. We have ESO, mission tech, 60 minutes, which basically adds up. And this is on the view. So let's go to okay, we don't we don't have the time from here we don't have it because we can't put it you so we have to be really uh, aware of that that uh, probably at a table to know where the we should add a table to say the time difference we should add it and okay i ain't gonna do that normally i would say here in this uh, records we have a extra extra user uh, dates you see Hours. Hour. So something like this. So UTC at hours, and this would be an int uh, where it would be standing two. So we can use this in the calculation of few, and maybe then put it in a few again. But we are just uh, adjusting to new things I have found out. So now we go back to Power Apps and we go back to our trigger and basically let's do formatting and it collects. Text. and what we basically have done now uh, we have a test sequence here for the future when there is something wrong we can just take these comments out we have test in place build it again but we can uh, put it out but let's leave it there for now okay 
this was a very long video um almost one and a half hours but we learned a lot so we uh, make our few chains and probably at the end have an idea how we can build our few and use that and use the logic in the few by adding one field in a table maybe i'm going to change that or i'm going to do the next video uh, we learned how to prepare our database just one store procedure to do all the changes that we want to do to add insert a record to update the record close the record and to do all things based on some variables we have in our table then we use flow and we just say to flow okay all the parameters come from power apps and then return json in just return our schema and then at the power apps side we insert the flow and we build our logic so we build up parameters and we uh thought about okay what do we load locally at start and then and we use all the time and what types of uh, parameters are we going to change in our and then when we change it we update our record or insert our record have to reset it and we build a trigger to reset just the parameters and maybe later on we're gonna add more parameters to that trigger or maybe we gonna add another toggle trigger with parameters for another kind of uh, parameters that we want to use so basically we're doing the same as in all program languages that we build parameters we have a library with functions and with uh, methods and uh, when we have centralized formulas we just put in parameters get back what we want get the things we want the actions we want our database to carry on or our code to carry on so i think this is very nice a nice trick i'm very delighted to show this to you and in the next video we're going to build our app and basically we're going to build in one video. I think a video from last time, one, one half hour maybe, we're going to build the whole app with all the buttons which you can trigger and just put your records on. And then we have basically a ready app for the core making registration to database and communicate with and to okay enough for now it's long enough thank you for watching and when you see this end thank you for watching so long and i hope to see you in the next video it's going to be nice also because we're gonna uh, have uh, logic in the app and we ain't gonna make buttons for everything we're gonna do it far far smarter so i hope to see you there and if you like then subscribe to my channel and see also other videos of course other videos in the future will be a lot shorter than this one but let's say when i build this myself i'm busy for i think 25 minutes and then i'm ready to build my app so it's great it's a great technique to make brilliant apps and to make them reliable efficient and very very fast so I hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.